In this video, I'll finish the Bible box replica by making the base tray and applying some finishing touches. In the first video, I made the lid by folding some paper lined card and covering it. I'll do something similar for the base tray, but I'll cover it differently. I'll wrap around the walls rather than covering the entire base. Looking closely at the base, the board is cut and folded the same as the lid. But looking at the bottom of the base, you can see the covering material from the walls goes in about 10 millimeters, and then a piece of paper was glued onto the base to cover the edges of the covering material. I'll make my base the same size as the original, and so I'll measure the original the same way I did the lid. Measure on the inside and score on the outside. This could be a problem if I wasn't using the same thickness material for the walls, or I hadn't got the size right on the lid. Another approach would be to measure the inside of the lid I made. Now I have external dimensions for the base, not internal. I'd need to subtract two wall thicknesses to get the dimensions for scoring on the outside. I took the easier approach of measuring the original. I didn't talk about the board thickness much in the first video. All the original is covered. When I measure the thickness, I'm measuring the board, plus at least one thickness of covering material and lining paper, maybe two. The thickness of the original is about 1.7 to 1.8 millimeters. The covering material and lining paper probably add about a half a millimeter. The closest I have to this is one millimeter gray board. My lining paper is thicker than the original, and in the end, my replica box walls end up very close to the originals at about 1.6 millimeters.
Once I've finished making the base, I realise I have a problem. My piece of covering material isn't long enough to cut a single strip to wrap all the way around the tray. I have no option but to do it in two pieces. Not the end of the world. I decided to put the join at a corner. The width of the strip needs to be the 10mm the material goes onto the base, the height of the walls and about 12 millimetres, which is about the average the covering materials goes down the walls on the inside. Once I cut the strips, I mark a line in 10 millimetres, so I have a guideline while applying the covering material. I make the overlap at the start and for the join, 25 millimetres. How the covering material is turned over onto the base is interesting. Again, it does not look like the material is cut. From the middle of a wall, the material is turned over and at the corner, it forms a 45 degree fold with material along the next wall. This then gets folded down and the process goes around the tray. A little dab of glue is put under the folded piece of the material at the corner. The overlapping folded pieces go in a spiral around the base. I thought this was pretty cool, as the kids would say.
turning in on the inside is the same as the lid. Carefully smooch it over the corner trying to form the neatest pleats possible. To finish the base I just need to cover the bottom with paper. Like the covering material this piece of paper has torn edges. I have more confidence in tearing paper so I decide to tear too. Going against the grain is a bit rough but scoring with the point of an awl helps. I want to minimise the pull of this piece of paper so I use the same dry PVA and have the grain match the board which was long grain. To finish completely I just need to cut the thumb notches and make and apply a label. The thumb notches are easy, I use a 20mm leather punch to make these. I have a cheap Chinese made punch, it needed sharpening to cut a decent edge. If you're in the US you can get a much better US made 3 quarter inch punch from CS Osborne. For the label I scanned the original top and end and joined them in Photoshop. I have another one of these Bibles that I think is earlier and it's the same size. I'm going to put it in this box. But it has a different font so I changed the name of the font on the new label. I printed the new label with my cheap Epson inkjet printer on 120 GSM matte art paper. A glossy paper would have been a better match but I'd need a colour laser printer for this. Once I glue the label on the box, it's finished. I leave the box dry and outgas for a week before making it the new home for my old Bible. This was a fairly simple project, but I enjoyed the detective work of trying to understand how the original was made and seeing how closely I could replicate it. And so there can be no confusion about this being an original box, I sign and date the inside of my replica.
I hope you've enjoyed the process too, and maybe you'd like to try making some historic models also. As always, I really appreciate you hitting the big thumbs up button. If you're able and want to, you can support the making of more videos like this through Patreon or with a one-off contribution, and the details are in the description below. If you want to be notified of my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Until next time, cheerio! Oh.